Right, let's have a quick look how to do uh, your ACI curve or CO2 response curve using this ACI response curve fitting 10.0 from landflux.org. So here we have example of data set from our own experiment. Okay, so there's a, there's a bunch of data over here, but you don't have to worry about them all. We only have to worry about, I'm sorry about this. Um, this is from our um, earlier exercise that we can delete. Yeah, so for this um, exercise, we need to do ACI. So of course we need to focus on ACI. Uh, columns only, but in addition to that, you need to, because you want your um, curve fitting and modeling to compute everything as correctly as possible. So you need to, in addition to A and CI, you need to fill in these cells as well, telling the um, tools about the light condition, the temperature, and also the atmospheric pressure. So let's have a look now. So let's copy for all the A and then you paste as a value. Remember to paste as value. We don't want the formula to come along with it as you copied it in. And then the CI, um, then what else? Then the light. Uh, for our case here, our light is labeled as QA, meaning that the quantum reading inside uh, for the inside chamber, which is this guy here, it kind of look, it's similar. We, we set it at 2000 uh, micromole light value. That's the saturating um, reading for our case, uh, the rice plant. And then the temperature, the temperature should be the, um, the tea leaf, the temperature of the leaf. So copy that as well. Right. Um, then uh, what about the atmospheric? Temperature. I'm oh, sorry, atmospheric pressure. So uh, pay attention to this. This one you need to pay a bit attention because the unit here, um, this in this uh, curve fitting tool is in millibar, but the one that we have here, the unit is in kilopascal. So you need to convert it. It's not that hard. Uh, you just um, add um, additional cell for that. Uh, we can have the millibar. To convert, um, yeah, you can check out on, 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 on Google very quickly, actually. Okay, to convert from kilopascal to millivar, the formula is simply by multiplying the pressure value by 10. So that's what we're going to do. So we have to put the equal sign, click the original value times 10, right? And you have everything in millibar. So drag it all the way down. So you do have to do the manual calculation, copy this and then paste into your curve fitting cells and voila, everything fits perfectly. So well, yeah, it looks very erratic now, not to worry because nothing has been fitted yet. So let's have a good fit. Yeah, you're going to get this, not to worry. Close this, close this. Uh, that's just a visual basic error. Okay, what we need to do now is we need to go to the developer or if your keyboard, keyboard works just fine, alternate F11. If your keyboard just like mine, for some reason it's not working, you need to summon it manually so that you get this guy shows up. And then you go to references and uh, you, yeah, this thing here, you need to uncheck this, but check this little box solver. Then click OK, close that. Okay, everything is nice, and then you can fit the curve. Wait for a while. Dum 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 uh, and then play, uh, paste it somewhere else. You can play around with the design if you don't like the, the line to be black or the uh, observation dots, uh, data dots to be black. You can change it into anything. Like, yeah. So it, 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 dep it depends on your aesthetic uh, preferences. Right. What you need to pay attention uh, to these things. Yeah. So you get here your VC Max, which is your, um, the, Rubisco uh, activity value, meaning that um, 
because with ACI, you can actually, if I can move this a bit here, yeah, this guy here, you can actually, um, because it is biphasic, you see, the first, the first part of the curve, it's um, increasing very abruptly. Yeah, so um, what we need to do is, I'm um, sorry, that does, it does it sometime, right? Uh, and then it kind of start to uh, flat away, becoming plateau. Just to make it clear, let's insert some, um, no, I don't want shit. Oh yeah, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, that looks okay. Make it black. Uh, no, make it red. Yeah, add some weightage to it. Uh, make it dash. Yeah, then you move it over here. Yeah, so this is the first part um, of your curve. If I can draw it. So this is the first part of your curve, and then this is the second part of your curve. So the first part is what we call as the um, Rubisco um, limited phase, okay, depending on how much uh, your Rubisco activity is or how abundant is your Rubisco in your in your plant cells, this will have impact on the VCMAX value, right? Yeah. On the other hand, for the second uh, phase here, this is called the RUBP generation. RUBP limited regeneration. Remember your Kelvin cycle? Yeah, your Kelvin cycle has um, three phases. Your Kelvin cycle, I'm sorry. Um, um, one second, I'll very quickly, I will get my... Um, tablet so that I can write very properly for you because I want you to get this right. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm a, sometimes I'm just not um, fully prepped because um, multitasking is really not my thing sometimes. Right, okay, so um, we're talking about the, the second phase here. So your Kelvin cycle right has um three phases right you have the three phases in your kelvin cycle this is not mercedes no it's just uh so this is the fixation reduction and also the regeneration yeah so when we say that this is the reading for RUBP regeneration, it actually referring to this part here. How much the RUBP um, is available um, to be used uh, for uh, carbon fixation. And this guy here, RUBP here, they can only be regenerated with the presence of ATP. Okay. If you remember, um, ATP is actually produced by the activity of a photosystem, right? So um, two things happening here, the cyclic and non-cyclic uh, photophosphorylation. Photophosphorylation. If your electron transport is super fast due to cyclic or non-cyclic um, electron flow, more RUBP can be regenerate, regenerated to be used by the um, Rubisco and fused with the CO2 so that you will get back your um, three. GP, right? So I'm not going to go deep into how the Kelvin cycle works, but the idea is that okay, you have active electron transport, you will have lots of ATP, and then when you have lots of ATP, 
uh, your RUBP can be regenerated to be used by the first phase of Kelvin cycle, which is the fixation of CO2, right? Okay, so and then this is the value and the J here simply referring, that's why the J here referring to the electron um, transport rate. Look at the unit here, micromole of electron per given area per second, all right? Okay, and then you also get uh, some, some values uh, for the uh, dark uh, respiration and also some other uh, useful parameters depending on your project's research question. All right, so good luck and I hope you have fun.